what is happening investors it is your boy jack it is good to be speaking to you all once again we're coming at you with a juicy video today we're going to be looking at four trade ideas for the next week something a little bit different so you may have noticed i've not uploaded for a while i did upload a community post let you guys know what was going on but essentially i was on a holiday it was fantastic went to disneyland paris then went to portugal really chilled out uh, now, honestly, I'm feeling better than I have in so long. I was excited to sit down, do my morning research, record a video. I haven't had that excitement in a while, baby. You can probably even tell just from my voice. But there is a lot happening in the market this week. I myself want to start, you know, looking at charts a little bit more again, potentially looking for some shorter term investments, some day trades, maybe some swing trades, things along those lines. And that's why I decided to make this video today. Now, quite a few big things happening this week. The first one being some economic reports coming up. And the four different trade ideas we're going to be speaking about today, they will all be timestamped in the description below if you want to just go find out that information if you want to look at either one. But please watch the video all the way till the end. Helps me out a lot. Markets have been crazy right now. There is a lot going on in the US. There is a lot going on in China with the Evergrande situation. There's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. It's never my intention to add to any of that. And that's why I want to try and you know, swing the agenda a little bit and give some actual trade ideas. Not just say that things are looking good or things are looking bad, but at the same time, I'm going to try to bring some, you know, broader value to the video. So right before we get into it, before we come up with these juicy ideas, could I please ask you to hit that juicy like button, drop me a comment down below, and please, my friend, subscribe if you're new around here. All of that helps me out so much. Also, if you're interested in joining my private Discord group, that'll be the first link in the description. We're going to be sharing my trade ideas live inside of there, along with my long-term investments. And I just recently did a full kind of portfolio update in there with my thoughts on every holding I have. So without further ado, okay, economic reports in the week ahead. The Federal Reserve meeting is the big marquee event in the week ahead. The sharpest focus will be on the language from the policy making committee on when it sees it as an appropriate time to start reducing the pace of asset purchases. Now, this is absolutely huge for anybody with literally any long term positions in the stock market. I think at this stage, everybody knows the primary reason that broader indexes and the majority of stocks in general have been going up is because of the Fed. OK, this is an inflated market. They have been pumping and pumping and pumping money into the markets for more than a year and a half at this stage. OK, that's why things are up without the Fed. Everything would be so much lower right now. A majority of economists expect the first change in bond purchases to take place in December. OK. That is not far away at all in the grand scheme of things. This is something that we have to keep an eye out for this week. Now, if you go over the market watch, you can see the entire US economic calendar. There's a few other things here. We see the existing home sales. This is the important one, FOMC statements and Fed Chair Jerome Powell news conference. So Wednesday will more than likely be quite volatile, okay? And for that reason, if you are looking to do some trades, be careful on Wednesday in particular, because pretty much anything could happen at the snap of a fingers. But I don't want to spend too much time speaking about that. Let's get into the actual trade ideas. And the first one, okay, is actually Aurora, ticker symbol ACV. Now, remember, when it comes to trading a stock, you don't have to like the stock. You don't have to love the stock. You can absolutely hate it because you plan on getting in and out. Maybe you're not even buying shares. Maybe you are shorting the company in order to make money. You're betting that it's going to go down. So, you know, Aurora, I don't really care for them whatsoever but they are volatile and they are particularly volatile around earnings periods, as you will see on the chart right in front of you right now. And their earnings are going to come out Tuesday after close. So there is one specific reason I'm bringing up Aurora today. It's very volatile. Okay, we can see that here. We'll go through some of the moves that have happened in the past, but it's after hours on Tuesday. And then Wednesday is the Fed meetings. Markets are going to be crazy. This is pretty much the highest risk play I'm going to speak about today. But yeah. So right now, this is a daily chart, but you can see if we go back to our earnings from May of 20, look at the upward move going from around 524 a share all the way up into the 18s before steadily declining. Okay. Another earnings here, huge volume, huge upwards moves from $4 a share all the way up to 15 before again, huge dips. And it happens again here. People buy in anticipation of the earnings. It sells off for prolonged periods of time. Okay. It's always volatile around earnings. This time's not going to be any different. If we compare it to their last earnings period, which is right here, you will see their surprise 
was negative 246 percent the estimate was at tw negative 20 cents right now the estimate is at negative 22 cents i will be interested to see what happens with them today however if we go over here you will see that pre-market not a lot has happened in the grand scheme they're down 1.21 percent if we see a large upward move today i potentially honestly will be looking to short this company if anything crazy happens if we also look at the technicals you'll see that it's not particularly oversold it's not overbought it's right around neutral so depending on what happens today volume wise depending if the technicals change much that's when i would be looking to trade as of right now it could go either direction but if we see this rsi get to overly bought levels or overly sold levels you'll see that it doesn't generally last very long with this company and you can get huge swings sometimes in the span of one day two days sometimes i might take a week but that is company number one my friends now the next one is not a company it is actually the hang seng index okay so a lot of you guys will be aware with certain things that are going on in china right now specifically with evergrande now you will see on the day as i've recorded this it's down 3.3 percent five days 6.7 one month down four percent six month down 16 and a half percent things haven't been going well and there is absolutely nothing indicating that they are going to get better anytime soon now for me this isn't one i particularly plan on playing personally as i don't follow this market as close as i do the u.s markets whatsoever but it doesn't take a genius to notice the trend that is happening it doesn't take a genius to see that there has been some huge downward moves happening as of late and again myself and most people don't expect that to change anytime soon the reason this is happening okay property fear spreads beyond evergrande growing investor angst about china's real estate crackdown rippled through markets on monday pummeling hong kong developers and adding pressure on beijing authorities to stop financial contagion from destabilizing the economy simply put we are seeing fear uncertainty and doubt in china and it's gone just from evergrande to many other sectors i mean these losses are absolutely huge i think you should all know that when it comes to an index a three percent day is insane i know it doesn't seem like it because of the last year and a half nearly two years at this stage but that is a huge move my friends so again it's not a likely one for me to play whatsoever i don't even know if it's available on trading 212 but it is one i wanted to bring up it's just worth knowing anyway now a very familiar face we have lucid motor stock okay one i am long and strong on in since around 12 dollars a share love them think the long time outlook is absolutely beautiful but let's look past them as a company for just a moment and try and look at them as a trade so the last day we had an eight and a half percent day that is beautiful you will see pre-market we're currently down three percent which actually falls in line with what i expect to happen and i'm actually kind of hoping happens so again if we look at the daily chart it looks like not a lot really has happened with lucid but if i bring that down even just to a four hour chart you will see a lot more price action here look from 29 all the way down to the 16s it's been huge it's been extremely extremely volatile one thing that happened was this okay i had this long-term area of support drawn out we touched off it we went below it but we came right back up in that same four hour period okay would lead me to believe we could well enter an upward trend especially if we are to get good news and good news we did get okay this article here why lucid group soared on friday the company announced a milestone and more investors are talking about the company's technology the environmental protection agency confirmed what lucid ceo and chief technology officer peter rollison had been saying for some time the company's top line electric vehicle the air dream edition has become the first electric vehicle ever to exceed a range of 500 miles on a single charge i don't have to tell you why that is absolutely huge and does genuinely warrant that a plus percent move in my personal opinion also analysts have been coming out bank of america with their 30 dollar price target we've been getting some nice analyst ratings as of late if you watched my latest video on lucid motors from nearly two and a half weeks ago at this stage I said i expect this to happen coming up to the 27th of september and i expect that in the next quarter or so we will see many more institutions buying in and that seems to be what is happening so i think now is the best time to buy no not whatsoever in all honesty that might sound crazy considering all of the things i just said but look at this upward move look at the macd look at the rsi a pullback is inevitable okay more than likely somewhere in the range of the low 20s maybe even the low 19s if we are to go back there do i think a short term buy would be a good idea yes do i plan on shorting them down there honestly no because there has been an awful lot of good news it could continue to go up but again look at that pre-market lucid is falling like a rock today it is not outside the realms of possibility for them to get back down to here in the relatively near future and potentially you know capitalize on an upward move off the back of that 
Again, keep an eye on the technicals. Keep an eye on what the RSI is doing, what the MACD is doing. Lucid is another one who doesn't tend to say too oversold or overbought for prolonged periods of time. I could be completely wrong and it could come all the way back down to $16 a share. Maybe it's going to be a fantastic short. Only time will tell. Now, the last one is quite a weird one. I'll admit it, seeing as it is Apple, you know, we have an average volume of 90.564 million. We have a market cap of 2.4 trillion. It's not your typical day trade or swing trade. Since Tuesday, the 7th of September, the company is down 6.78%, okay? Which for Apple is a quite considerable downwards move. And honestly, I expect it to go a little bit lower, potentially down to the 142s, maybe even 140s, maybe even a little bit below. That's what the technicals are saying. That's what the volume indicators are saying. That's what the general pattern is saying. Now, it could well just bounce right from here at 144, 145. But if we were to come down to the 140s, I would consider opening up you know, a little position of a buy. Now I have my long-term position in Apple. I may well actually add to my long-term position if we are to see those prices as well, but I would also be willing to open a shorter term trade. And again, this isn't based off of news. This isn't based off of anything crazy happening. This is literally just price action and just what the charts are leading me to believe may happen going forwards in a relatively near future. But remember, when it comes to day trading, when it comes to swing trading, you can have all of the news, okay? You can have all of the technical indicators. You can have you know, the most beautiful plan in your head. The market doesn't really care sometimes, let's be completely honest, or else there would be some extraordinarily rich gurus out there. So as you will see, most of the plays I'm looking at, we could actually play either in the upwards or the downwards direction. Apple right now, I don't really think it's worth shorting. I don't think there's enough profit potential, whereas with the buy, I think it would be a little bit more. You could always buy a 3x Apple as well, get a little bit of leverage in there. It may be something I do. We'll have to see. The Hang saying more so I'm looking for a downwards movement. But when things turn around, I reckon we could see a very nice upward movement for this index. ACB, I don't care if I buy or sell this stock. I don't follow them. I don't really care for the company. But we see that volatility. There's big money to be made, but also lost here. More than likely, I would prefer to sell an insane move up. And then Lucid Motors is Lucid Motors. Always been extremely volatile. We can see some volume coming back in as of late, like bigger volume than we've seen for a long time now. That's why I'm including in today's video. And that is primarily due to the fact that, you know, we got the good news about the 500 mile range and also the upgraded analyst price targets and the initial coverages. But anyway, my friends, if you watched this video all the way till the end, I just would like to take this opportunity to say you are a true legend. And I really do appreciate you being here from the bottom of my heart. Your support really does mean the world to me. Everybody who's still here, everybody who's waited for me to come back for my two-week break, I appreciate you. I don't just say that for the fun. I know as a YouTuber, you kind of have to say these things, but I genuinely do. You mean the world to me. Thank you so much. If you did enjoy the content, maybe you would like some more content. Could I please ask you to hit that juicy like button, subscribe and hit that bell button to make sure you don't miss any uploads, and drop me a comment down below. All of that helps with the juicy YouTube algorithm. Anyway, guys, I hope you all have a beautiful, blessed day. I'll see you in another video very soon. Peace.